Hey, let's take a peek at what I packed in my pulk. I just finished doing a video on what I hike out in when I go backpacking in winter here in Minnesota. Kind of what I wear as I'm walking. Now I want to show you the load that was in my pulk, the extra pieces of clothing I bring to wear at camp. In the morning when I get out of the hammock, I have a little system I put on. Keep in mind, I don't weigh the pulk. I know when I lift it and put it in the back of my Jeep, it's manageable. A lot of the weight is, is food and maybe the liquid I bring out, including some Coleman fuel and the water I carry and the thermos of hot drink I carry on the walk out. You know, winter is not a time for ultralight. Depending on your trip, you could go, but uh, I don't want to do it. I think I did it way back in the day, but I didn't have that much gear. So I guess I could call it kind of ultralight. But I was cold. I was almost cold all the time. Now I don't want to be cold. I want to be comfortable. But I know people are always looking to uh, look into your pack or your pulk. Here's the first thing I want to show you right here is the pulk that I pulled. That is my Jet Sled Junior. The Jet Sled Junior pulk is 42 inches in length, 20 inches wide. Of course, I have my pulk harness. This is from Ski Pulk. This is the part that goes around my waist. I like this one because it has the shoulder straps. Really helps me pull a lot. I prefer it. it takes a lot of that pulling out of my hips. It has two fiberglass poles and it hooks on the end of my pulk. That is my preferred pulk pulling system. And one thing I bring with this pulk is I have this, uh, this is actually a hammock suspension. This is actually a hammock daisy chain suspension. I use this for pulling the pulk around when I'm going to get firewood or something because I don't need my big harness for that. But oftentimes I bring my bigger jet sled pulk. Uh, this pulk is 54 inches long and 24 inches wide. Take one, put it inside the other. And the larger one weighs about 11 pounds. This one, just under seven. And what I have in here is the duffel bag that I put everything in. It's just a duffel bag like any other duffel bag you get anywhere. And this is what I keep all of my cookware in. And that sits in the back of my pulk right there. This is just an old cooler. These are my black diamond flick lock hiking poles with snow baskets on the end. I have a lightweight tripod that I use for my camera uh, to set up shots. This is my Grand Forest Brook splitting axe. The length of this, 23 inches. Weighs just a little over three pounds. Here I have my Silky Big Boy 360 saw. That weighs about a pound and a half. Of course I have my MSR Denali snowshoes that I used. I like those. They have great traction. They don't have that great a float. I have a video on my snowshoes. Just look up in the corner and click on that eye right up there and I'll have a link to it. Got my snow shovel right here. I love having the snow shovel with me. This weighs about a pound and a half and it is a BCA Traverse shovel. Um, I'm tired of having wet hands, wet cold hands, so Shoveling out the, the area to put my hammock and do a lot of chores with. Love having the shovel. This is my camp chair for winter only. It has a back on it. I taped some insulation from Hickory's Fire Department. That's right. It's your Bedford County Fire and Rescue. Right there. Sponsoring my chair. And this one folds up. Probably about two and a half pounds. It is made by Coleman. Same people that make your Coleman lantern. I like having a chair. That's one thing I've added in um, just to sit around that fire and I can move it anywhere and I sit in it and change clothes over by my hammock too. So that's something I bring. Maybe you don't, but I do. And I'm glad I do. I ain't no fool because I do what I do. I carry this Stanley thermos right here. This is a hot drink I keep in the pulk for walking. Got my Steger Mucklucks I wear around camp. I hike out in them. These are the Yukon brand from Steger. They're about 200 bucks with the wool liners. I wouldn't go winter camping in Minnesota without them. I'm talking about a camping trip in deep winter in Minnesota where we're getting some sub-zero temperatures. So winter where you live may be different than winter where I live. So consider your winter, consider your temperatures, your winds, your snowfall and everything, and plan your winter trip accordingly. This is the thermometer I bring. It's a Therm Pro. Not Thermo Pro, a Therm Pro. And I use these around the house. This part hangs outside. This is your transmitter. 
This is your receiver. And what it is, and a lot of people ask me why I have a piece of tape over the bottom of this, and I'll show you why. Right now, it records the humidity and the temperature. So this is outside temperature, this is inside. Sleep with that in my pocket, all right? So if I show you the temperature and it says minus 24 out here, it might say 92 down here. So I just keep a piece of tape over that just so you can see the actual outside temperature because that's the only temperature that I care about. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I always bring my snow goggles. I've needed these a few times hiking across the lakes when it was really like a crusty, sleety snow going right in my eyes. And on really bright days, these are handy to have. These are just cheap ones I got at REI years ago. War Bonnet Superfly Tarp. That is my shelter out there. I bring snow stakes. Sometimes I have to use a stick as a dead man. Yes, this is the snow stake system. And if you look up at this eye right up here in the corner, I have just a little minute and a half video on how I use my snow stakes. If you see my tarp in my last video, you can see it looks like I have a pole on the inside. And that is my center pole that goes inside my Superfly tarp. It opens it up for me, but it also sheds snow and doesn't let my tarp collapse in on me. I also have uh, just some cord I bring out, just utility cord. Got my through night T20 headlamp right there. That's what I use. One AA battery inside. It works great for me. Um, this is a basically a Camelback plastic bottle. This is the one I sleep with at night in a two gallon baggie so that I make sure water doesn't freeze and I have it with me in the morning to make my my Dagliadoro from the hammock. I can have my espresso, my, my coffee, my espresso from the hammock, my Dagliadoro. And I don't sleep with it in these cozies, which is just Reflectix. I have a video on making cozies. We'll shout out to Tinny on that. Look up, click on the eye, it might be in there, or the links below. And I just have these two double together, and that way my hot water goes in there and stays pretty good. I have my fire kit right here. I just have some basic cheap fire starters that you can use around the house. Got a couple of extra lighters in there, just big lighters. And right here, this orange part hanging off the end, that is my um, blow tube. I have that in there. Fire starters I'm using right now are these right here. I use them at my fire pit in the back. It's just like a plastic with this waxy stuff. Hit it with a lighter. It's just a, a cheaty way. It's called the Igniteo. I think that says it all. My first aid kit right here. Just band-aids. I have a quick clot in case I chop my leg and I can stop the blood. And um, I have these little bandages right here. Micro men's, which sort of have these little hooks in them, or me or somebody with me has a pretty good wound. This thing, if you look at the picture, I think it says it all. It has these little spiky ends. You can pull your wound together and pinch it off. And then one of my little luxuries is my little table by Svorzevani, Black Bee. I have my little table in there that I like to use on the ground under my tarp next to my hammock to use my Fancy Feast alcohol stove in the morning with one ounce of alcohol that I sleep with, that I do not melt snow with, that I take the water from this bottle that I slept with and pour in my mug and boil that water, not melting snow, and have myself a beautiful cup of Medaglia Doro Instant Espresso. And that sits there, and what I prefer in the winter is to use the little tripod stand, and I screw that right on. And I'm using a little bit of a larger one because I got just a little more room. Bam! And I got that baby just for sitting there. And what I really like is the pouch that it comes in, the carry case. I use this all around camp. I move it around. I throw my InReach Explorer, my headlamp down there, spoons, just my knife, tissues, just various things I need around in the day. I know they're always right there by me. Now inside the duffel bag in the pulk, I use this old thing right here, which is the brain, the top of my Kelty Coyote pack. But I just use this as a place to keep um, a bunch of knickknacks. I keep my headlamp in there as I'm hiking, and so at night I know where it is. I have my little bag, my candle lantern, full length candle lantern that uses these 
nine hour candles like that. So I carry one extra candle. I like having a little candle light at night up by the camp. I keep some pocket ham warmers in there, my Leatherman tool there. And the Leatherman, I bring that winter camping just in case I have to repair my snowshoes or do something. A couple of extra batteries. I have a couple of lighters right here, but with those I'll I will put those and wear those next to my skin while hiking and at camp. And those are my, a uh, couple of these are my lighters that I like using at camp. Been liking these big lighters with the little extended end for lighting my Coleman stove. Nicest thing is this thing has an inside pocket with a snap on it. And that's where I keep my car key. So a lot of little things I'll just have in there. And sometimes things I'll carry in my ribs pack which I'll show you next, will end up here at camp. But while I'm walking, they're on me, so I have them as I'm pulling that pulk on down the trail. What I'm wearing here is called a ribs pack. Now, I'm showing it to you because I had it on walking out. As far as I know, they're out of business. It just zips together. You can wear it loose like that. But this is my, mainly in winter, and I'll have, uh, I keep my the camera I'm talking into, that'll be in here with inside this bag, which has a little pocket that has a little small pocket hand warmer in there to keep it warm and operational hand warmers. I keep a soft piece of fleece on there for just kind of wiping my nose because I always get a raw nose there from wiping gloves and everything, just like just get a runny nose. I keep my InReach Explorer, which has SOS on it. I have routes in here. I can text Mag using this thing by linking it with my iPhone. I will have my iPhone in this little old closed cell phone pouch I made. I will drop a pocket ham warmer into there and that will keep the phone alive. I have my battery for charging, an anchor battery. That way if my phone dies or my inReach has such a great battery, it usually lasts for days. But I can charge things up if I need to in the moment right then. I keep my camera batteries and I bring about seven in the winter. Those are the batteries for the camera I'm talking into right there. I will still have this small tripod because I can hook this to things. That will be down in here. I'll have a couple of snacks in there in these front pockets. And I keep some charging cords right in there. I keep my compass down in here because sometimes you know you just need a quick bearing to kind of know when you're walking across these lakes going, I need to be going that way, and I'm kind of going that way. So I'll take a bearing so my compass is there. Just sort of anything that I'm going to need in a moment on the trail will be in my ribs pack right there. In here, in this bundle right there, is probably what I consider my most important thing. In here is my Superior Gear hammock with a 15 degree built-in underquilt. I have a 30 degree comforter which works as a top quilt or under quilt. I have that as an under quilt over the outside of the hammock. I have this little, what's called a sit pad, but I always use this and I use it really under inflated under my feet inside my top quilt in the hammock. And what I like about that is it gives me a little extra insulation, but I can squeeze it up between my heels and get a little padding because I just got those old man feet. This is my top quilt that I was sleeping with on the last trip I took. This is a zero degree High Sierra Sniveller from Jack's or Better. And I was not cold other than my feet on that trip. And I'm gonna blame myself for that because I, I have my down jacket over the foot box. My feet should not have been cold. We did get down to minus 24 and this is a zero degree top quilt, but I was not cold on my body at all. This is my Jax or Better Zero Degree High Sierra Sniveller in its stuff sack. But I was wearing this jacket and I consider this part of my sleep system. I had that but I went to sleep with it. Normally when I crawl in I might have this down in the hammock with me or just hanging back on my ridge line. And when I get up for my I always get up to pee like at 3 30, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. I go ahead and slip this on at that time because, you know, winter, it's, it's long nights and you go to sleep early. Early! So when I wake up to have breakfast from the hammock and have my Medagliadoro instant espresso from the hammock, I'm already wearing this jacket. All right, so I don't have to put much else on and I'll have a pair of gloves in the pocket 
which these gloves are my sort of extreme backup gloves, but I'll slide these on in the morning. They're just some fleece gloves because I'll be wearing probably some little half gloves underneath to sleep in and my wrist warmers. And this way I can get out there in really cold weather, get my pot set up, get my alcohol fuel poured into my fancy feast, get my water on, whoo, bring my hands back in, wait for that to boil, and then have my hot drink. So this is what I call part of my sleep system. It's this jacket right here. It's an old Golight. It's not a company that exists anymore. Down jacket. I bring it out for just that extra layer of warmth if I need it when things get really cold and you're sitting around. But I always take it. I, I pull the sleeves inside. I will take it and zip it up like this. Okay. So I'll zip the jacket up. I pull the sleeves inside so that extra down is inside the jacket and not dangling out of the jacket. I take my uh, top quilt then, which is in my hammock, and before I go to sleep, I take that jacket and I slip it over the foot end of my top quilt, like this. Because I'm not wearing this jacket, it's just going to be inside my pulk and you know my duffel bag somewhere so not getting used so I figure why not take this a little bit of extra down and just insulate your feet with it while you're out winter camping because it seems when you're winter camping the one place you're gonna get cold is your feet so that's what I do with this the other thing I have before I go to sleep and this is just a plain fleece face mask this hooks in the back with some velcro Hello, Clarice. I can see your cheap handbag and smell your low-rent perfume. And then this is just a hood that I took off an old down jacket from years ago. It was one of Meg's down jackets, an EMS. And this is normally what I sleep in. I'll have my balaclava, probably uh, my blue beanie I'm wearing, maybe a, a black rock down hat. But in extreme cold weather, my head is sticking out of that top quilt because I'm a hammock guy. So I'm in, in here like this. So you want to keep that head warm if you want to be warm. And this keeps me warm and my face is warm that way. And it is mighty stylish. Really hard to find a face mask like this. They almost all have neoprene in it now. And the great thing about this is it's nothing but soft, buttery fleece. And I don't even know where to get them. I got this probably 25 years ago, I think at United Stores here in Minnesota. Those stores went out of business, so I'm lucky to have that. And I... I covet this little piece. I, I covet myself with that little piece of equipment. Um, a lot of times my insulated underwear, a thin pair that I wear out hiking, I will take off. If they're not that damp, I leave them on. And I take these pants. These I found on the edge of my yard from an old neighbor once, and he told me I could just keep them. They're cross-country ski pants that had a stirrup. I cut the stirrup off. goes down around your foot. Just a regular fleece, maybe a 200, kind of stretchy. I always wear these. I put these on immediately. I sleep in these. I basically live in these with a pair of insulated underwear on underneath them in camp the whole time. Those will stay on. And then these wool pants will go on over the top. Or if I'm not wearing the wool pants, some sort of a more technical hiking pant like that will still go over these fleece pants. I do not wear these fleece pants hiking. I save them for camp. But when I get to camp, I normally either go into this shirt right here, which is just an REI, a little bit thicker merino wool shirt. I like this one because it has the Napoleon pocket right there. So I got that pocket. Like I already have a lighter in there and a wet wipe and I keep my one ounce of fuel in there and I keep camera batteries in there and little things that I want right up against my body to stay warm out in deep winter. Sometimes I end up going with this even thicker merino wool shirt. Sometimes this goes over that one. Just depends on the cold I'm feeling. I will wear sleeping, nice big wool socks like this. I stretch them out so that they're nice and loose. They're not compressing my legs. Normally just one pair when I'm sleeping. So when I get up to pee, I can just slip right into my mucklucks. And I have this pair of more like a heavyweight insulated underwear that I'll often switch into if my hiking ones are super wet. And if it's a sub-zero trip, then I'll have these on under these thin fleece tights. 
I used almost all this stuff. So it seems like a lot when I show it to you, but once it's all packed and, you know, you think about it as a sleep system, a clothing system, a hiking system, a cooking system, which we'll get to, seems like a lot. But my favorite thing is I don't pull a hot tent or a stove. I will build a fire, but I like to depend on my my system, my sleep system, and my clothing system to keep me warm. I, I just kind of enjoy that. So when I wake up in the morning, and my thing is to have that hot cup of coffee while laying in my hammock. That is my, by far, favorite thing to do. It's what got me into hammocks, Did the quest for finding a comfortable way to just lay there, sip a cup of coffee, have a little meat sandwich, a Pop-Tart, enjoy the morning, think about the day ahead of me. I love that. So when I first get up, and people ask about this a lot, are your boots frozen, are your mucklucks frozen? My mucklucks, wherever they are here, you know, even though my muckluck has a felt liner in it, um, and let me just yank that out right quick, a muckluck has a big, thick felt liner inside. Um, and the theory with the muckluck is as your foot is sweating, that moisture can come out through this felt, thus coming out through the moose skin on your mucklock. So you're, you're, you're venting, sort of. Now, in theory, that's, it, it really does work, but when you have moisture in there, and I oftentimes have some moisture around the top, so when I take my mucklock off for the night to go to sleep, I take this top and I roll it down like this, and also in a mucklock, you have these insoles in the bottom. I have this felt insole, and I have this sort of a rubber insole that has a little bit of an arch in it. So I have these two that go inside the liner, because I'm I'm pretty much camping out there in some pretty pretty good cold. All right, and that's just a level of protection underneath. So I spread that out. I, I sewed a loop of Grogaine onto the back of my liner. So when I get up to go use the bathroom, these are spread out, and they'll be kind of kind of frozen. Once my feet are out of it, that wool will kind of get firm. And I use my finger in that while I'm stuffing my foot in to kind of pop my foot in and get up and go take a pee. Same thing in the morning. When I get out of the hammock after having that coffee, I like to take this down jacket off the foot end of my top quilt and slip that on over Hi, Bean. that orange jacket that I sleep in. Oh, hello back there, Bean. What you doing? Are you just sitting on my jacket back there, buddy? I'm sleeping in, keep in mind, a pair of wool socks, insulated underwear, and these fleece pants. So I don't want to mess around with going and putting on the wool pants with the suspenders over everything. They're up in the pulk. They're kind of stiff and frozen. I always carry these Thermowrap pants I bought years ago. They have these big leg zips. You can zip them open. And I just slip these on over this. These are made by Mont Bell Thermowrap pants. They're a synthetic insulation. They are really warm. I love these things. Put on that down jacket, and that's my just first getting up wearing around in the morning. I might slip this on, like when it was minus 24, I put this military fleece thing on. This, yes, this is my pre-morning constitutional morning dress. Once I've taken my morning constitutional, then I'm free and clear. I've had my coffee, I've, I've had some water to drink, I've had a little something to eat. I have emptied myself of the horror that lies within me. And now I am set to go ahead and change out for the day and get ready. So that's basically kind of my clothing system that transfers over into my sleep system and my hike in around camp sleep system wear and that is just a constant sort of shell game of mixing and matching and putting this with that and that with this and also in the morning when I get up I just leave my hood on I don't really wear it any other time of the day other than sleeping and when I first get up and I'll just leave it on because I'm just trying to keep all that heat in me on those cold 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 Minnesota mornings now Bean as you can see, as I'm doing this video, I keep chunking these clothes to the side, and he just makes his bed right on it, because Bean knows warmth, don't you, Bean? Bean Bob! Beanie Weenie Beanie Weenie! Hey, Bean Bob! This is my poop pack. Everybody has one. I have toilet paper in here. I'll carry some wet ones, and I use that wet wipe, and I wash my face, my ears, my nose. 
I kind of go down and hit some of my, my frontal regions before I go to my back and polish myself up. And I always carry that out. I kind of just fold it back up, put it back in the pack, put it in a plastic bag, burn my toilet paper. Although last trip we were able to get into the backwoods latrine, so that was way down deep. And it, same as summer, you're not burning your paper in a latrine. Um, I have some hand sanitizer in there and I keep my toothpaste and toothbrush. That is my poop pack. This is one thing I brought out. This is a reflector oven. I had this thing for 20 years. I know me and Hickory used it in the mountains one time. And it sets up, you might have saw it if you watch my minus 24 video. It sets up and the theory is reflects the heat from the fire. And, and I have made a pizza and some stuff in it and I brought it and really it, it sort of became more Jonah's shelf <laughs> than, uh, it, it was just kind of in the way of our fire. I sort of tried to thaw out one of my pizza crusts and it got too hot and you had to get it too close to the fire to really get the heat. And we had kind of a small fire pit, so I brought it, didn't use it. It weighs about, probably about three pounds. Dad will ever bring it again. But I wanted to give it one more shot, so I brought that. Now here is my, basically my, my food and cook system. I carry my MSR stove all assembled in this thing like that. So I don't have to take time to put it together. It's sitting on a stove stand and they still make these, they're hard to find, but it holds my whole stove together. I got my fuel in here. All I gotta do is pump it, light it. And here I have my windscreen and the other little parts from my MSR stove and you're going to want to put your windscreen around that stove when you use it. That, that kind of a deal goes around your stove. I love how this can just be right in the top if needed. Just gives me a little bit of peace of mind. Um, I have an extra container of fuel because if you use nothing but a stove you'll be surprised at how much fuel you use. Um, if you have a fire to augment that you don't need as much fuel, but in the morning our wood was so punky on the last trip, I would just go down there after drinking the water I slept with, drinking the water that was in this, or sharing it with a friend and having some water. Uh, you got to drink a lot of water in the winter, so that goes fast, and then it's time to start melting some, some snow. So I like just having that to get on with it. Sometimes I don't want to wait for that fire to get hot, I want to get to it, so I do that. This is my regular cook kit in here with my hillbilly pot, my coffee mug, my alcohol stove, and just the, the stuff that I carry on every trip. That's in there. I use that a lot. These are just a couple of coffees. A G7 sweet coffee. Thanks, Jason. I enjoyed that. Got my spoon. I have a little, um, this is a small frying pan because in winter it's really nice to have and like on canoe trips. And that way I got a little something to, to cook in make a pancake or whatever. Jonah had his cast iron, so I didn't use this a lot, but a little. I carry just this little pie tin. Makes a nice cover for it. Uh, it's winter, so I did bring my... Those are just um, paper towels. That's a piece of Nomex that Hick Hickory sent me for as a pot grabber. That's just some tin foil. I got a pot grabber right there that I bring. That's my little, uh, that's just some oil for cooking. That's just a bandana. This is my old stainless steel MSR cook kit. I do bring this in winter. This is the cozy for it to keep everything warm because sometimes just having this little, um, my little Imusa hillbilly pot, uh, you know, I, I want to melt a little bit more snow. So I have that. Um, I carry a yellow plate to eat on and fan the fire. And that's my little bit of extra alcohol fuel right there. And then I keep my Mora knife in there. That's just your uh, Mora Clipper knife I've had forever. Got that? Keep that handy. I know it's all in there. Plastic bag for trash. That's what I keep in there. So I know where all my cook stuff is. I'm not going to, in this video, show you how I load the pulk. If I go on a trip next week, uh, I may show that. Winter camping is about confidence. Yes, they always say you carry your fears. I'm carrying a couple of things to be comfortable. I don't really have a fear out there. Even if you get super cold, I never feel I'm going to die. I might spend a really cold night, but I don't feel like it's going to be death. I can always, hopefully, get to the car unless I'm injured. And if I go with people, then I'm going to count on them to get me out or me them. 
and have been in that situation before. So that's pretty much what I got in there. Uh, I know it seems like a lot, <laughs> like a lot to me right now, but I think I used everything I had at some point. Um, it, it got used. I think that says it all. So my load is not going to be your load. Your load is not going to be my load. Their load is not going to be their load. His load is not going to be your load. And your load is not going to be his load. But his load might be my load. Because he just watched his video. That's what I'm saying. just expected at this point. Woo buddy! I'll skip six him. Woo buddy! What is that face? That is the face of Beam Bomb! <laughs>